Is it possible to utilize a CNC machine for the production of violin components? Um, short answer, sure, for cheap ones. For good instruments, not so much, and I'll explain why. And just in case you're unfamiliar with what the question is asking, a CNC machine, uh, in this case a CNC router, is a programmable machine that can carve uh, complex shapes. For cheap student grade instruments, you can get away with using CNC because the goal there is to produce a reasonably nice looking instrument and sound is not exactly of prime concern. You just want to get instruments that young kids can learn on and you need to crank them out. And you can use a CNC machine to carve very complex shapes. The only problem where it concerns instrument making is that it makes no allowances for the variation in material. If you're carving something out of aluminum or brass or steel on a CNC machine, that's fine. One part is going to be the same as the next part, provided you're making things out of the same alloy. But wood is a little different. Uh, it has a lot of variation in it just because it's an organic material. No two pieces of wood are going to sound the same, and therefore you wouldn't want to carve them the same either. I've had a fair number of people ask me, well, why can't you just take measurements off of an existing instrument, say a Stradivarius? Uh, if the CNC machine is accurate enough, you can get it to make something within a tolerance of 0.001 millimeters. That's pretty dang exact. And just put some wood in there and let it carve and it should be just as good, right? No, it doesn't work that way. The reason why Strad carved that violin the way that he did in terms of the arching, the shape of the F-holes exactly, how, how light it was graduated, and which is thicker in some spots and thinner than others, has everything to do with the wood itself. He did not have a single unified plan that he made over and over again. I mean, he had his own consistent visual style that evolved over time, like, like any artist would, but it wasn't a one-size-fits-all approach. Considerations for the wood itself came first and foremost. If the wood itself was stiffer, you could get away with lower arching, for instance, or if a sweeter tone was desired, you might, you might have a slightly more bulbous arching. Another interesting phenomenon among Strad's instruments is that sometimes the base side F-hole is actually a, a full millimeter lower than the treble side. And it's believed that he did this to compensate for whatever structural deficiencies or uh, idiosyncrasies were in the wood that he was working with. It's typically much stiffer here in the center and therefore thicker spreading out thinner towards the edges. And these graduations may be just a little bit thicker from one instrument to another, depending on the wood that he's using. CNC could be used to route most of the purfling groove going around the edge of the instrument. Uh, purfling is a series of inlaid pieces of wood. You have uh, two that are dyed black and a uh, natural wood in the middle of them. And these corners would still have to be done by hand. You could route all the way up to about, say, here. And then the detail of how these miters meet can only really be accomplished by hand work. Also, the carving of the sound holes has to be done by hand. CNC machines are not sophisticated enough in order to do this sort of thing uh, reliably. Um, they may be someday, but this is still very much an element of an artist's signature. And you won't find many violin makers outside of manufacturers just cranking out instruments for young students that are willing to turn this over to a machine. Also, the finishing of wooden surfaces is really best done by hand. Much of the shaping is done by gouges, hand planes, finishing with scrapers. And you really have to take into account wood grain and how it moves. And wood grain direction can switch in subtle ways 
um, that a computer can't really predict, but an artist utilizing their hands and their visual and tactile and audio feedback can uh, suss out in ways that a computer just couldn't. Computers also are not sophisticated enough to tap tune plates. That is to say, to remove wood if necessary in order to produce certain tones, pitches, overtones uh, in ways that are able to be controlled. Just tap tuning just one plate requires three separate modes of tuning, modes one, two, and five. And that's a complicated subject on its own that I may get into later. Now I have read where several fine makers utilize a CNC machine for roughing out the fingerboard, for instance, but that's pretty much just a time saver. And it's not something that requires the same amount of subtlety and complexity that uh, carving a top or the back of the instrument is concerned with. And even when most of the grunt work is done, taking a rectilinear block of ebony and shaping it into a fingerboard, there's still a fair amount of handwork involved in order to get that tuned and working exactly the way it should. For myself personally, I don't really see myself ever using a CNC machine in my shop uh, for several reasons. Uh, first of all is the cost. Those things are expensive, at least certainly good ones. Um, also, there's space considerations that I have a 12 by 16 workshop that is uh, pretty much jam-packed as it is, and a CNC router would take up a whole lot of valuable real estate in my shop. And during the times that it's not being used, it's just gonna get in the way. And third, there's the consideration that I have to learn an entirely new set of skills to go along with it. I'd have to learn how to program the CNC machine. I'd have to learn how to like physically use the thing in terms of like securing my work pieces, getting it configured, making sure that everything is all dialed in. And that's just a lot of time spent doing something that I don't want to do. And fourth, there's the intensely personal artistic reason that part of the reason why after doing woodworking for, you know, a couple of decades or so, that I got into violin making in general First of all, there's the reason that I've always wanted to do this. But it's just the fact that because there is so much handwork involved and machines don't really enter into it, it's peaceful. I love the fact that I can work on a project like this from start to finish and not have to use headphones or a respirator mask. <laughs> and... Machines are noisy, they're dusty, they're expensive, and I just don't want to hassle with it. So I hope that answers your question well enough, and uh, if there's any other questions or comments, feel free to hit me up. See you later. Bye.